Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a quick note, earlier a colleague asked that Mr. Raskin take down his words when referring to another colleague as being a member of a cult. I think if folks would just admit that President Biden won the 2020 election and would stop pushing the big lie, they wouldn't have to worry about being accused of being in a cult. Um, Attorney General Garland, I represent Congressional District 16 in El Paso, Texas, and we're coming into this hearing fresh off the heels of a gravely unjust redistricting session in the Texas State Legislature where Republicans engaged in deliberate, shameless, extreme partisan gerrymandering. Texas gained two new House seats fueled by the growth in our Latino population. But instead of drawing maps reflecting that growth, Republicans chose not to add Latino majority districts. And according to a lawsuit filed by the Mexican American Legal Defense Fund, drew maps that diluted the voting rights of Latinos. This process was opaque and non-transparent, perhaps because Texas Republicans hired a politi political operative known to have Republican members of Congress sign non-disclosure agreements. I ask unanimous consent to enter into the record an article from the Texas Tribune entitled, Texas appears to be paying a secretive Republican political operative $120,000 annually to work behind the scenes on redistricting. Without um, objection. Thank you so much. Um, my own district was impacted in a process I have described as being akin to looting. And unfortunately, Texas isn't the only state where this is happening. Um, Mr. Garland, what steps is the Justice Department taking to ensure that redistricting plans do not violate the Voting Rights Act and discriminate against racial, ethnic, and language minority voters? Um, so we announced uh, um, uh, before any of the redistricting uh, plans began uh, because we knew that the uh, decennial um, um, uh, census um, would be leading to redistricting plans, that the voting um, uh, section of the uh, Civil Rights Division will be reviewing uh, all of these plans. Uh, that's why we doubled the size of the voting uh, section because the uh, burden uh, uh, of this of this work is is large, and there's a lot of it because of the census. So, the Justice Department Civil Rights Division will be um, examining these plans and uh, will uh, act accordingly as the facts and the law provide. Thank you, Mr. Garland. Um, in addition to the extreme partisan gerrymandering that is going on, states like mine have passed voter suppression legislation all of it rooted in Donald Trump's big lie about the 2020 election. In light of these numerous state laws that pass that restrict access to the ballot box, how at risk are minor minority voters from being disenfranchised in elections over the coming years? And what will the department do to confront those risks? So um, Justice Department has authority under the Voting Rights Act um, to uh, prevent changes in practices and procedures uh, with respect to voting that are discriminatory uh, in the ways that you describe. Um, the Supreme Court in Shelby County case eliminated uh, one tool we had, uh, which was the Section 5 preclearance um, provision. Uh, so what we have now is uh, Section 2, which allows us to make these determinations on a case-by-case -case basis with respect to a discriminatory intent and a dis a discriminatory effect. Um, the, the voting rights section are, is reviewing uh, the changes that are made as they are being made and after they are being made. Uh, we have filed uh, one lawsuit already uh, in that respect and the uh, investigations are continuing. I can't talk about any particular state though. Thank you, and in my very limited time, uh, women in Texas are under attack. Our freedom to uh, reproductive rights and our rights to an abortion are under attack. Um, and this has been furthered by the Supreme Court and their uh, recent, the consequences of their shadow docket. In your opinion, what are some of the practical consequences of the court's decision denying stay in the case, the Texas case, via the process informally known as the shadow docket. You've got about 20 seconds, I'm so sorry. All right, well, most of what I'm about to say uh, is reflected in the briefs that we just filed with the Supreme Court the other day, uh, asking them to take this case. Uh, what we're particularly concerned about is the inability of anybody to challenge what is a clear violation of the Supreme Court's precedent with respect to the right to abortion. 
um, because of the way that the law is structured. And we can't have a system in which constitutional rights evade judicial review, uh, whether it's about abortion or uh, any other right. And uh, uh, I think I'll leave it with uh, uh, my, our briefs, which were just filed uh, and which explicate what I just said in greater detail and I'm sure with greater style. Thank Generally. you so much. Mr. Chairman, I yield back.